Very good morning, my dear friends. I am Dr. M. C. Nataraja, Professor from the Department of Civil Engineering, Ramaya Institute of Technology, MSRIT, Bangalore. So I welcome my students for the session 12. In fact, this is the last session as far as the module 1 is concerned. Friends, so this is what the subject design of uh, steel structural elements 18 CV 61 for the sixth semester of uh, B students. Students, if you recollect uh, what we were discussing in the previous uh, classes. So we have derived the expressions for the ultimate load carrying capacity of uh, simply supported beam, propelled beam, fixed beam. And also we have discussed a couple of problems related to calculation of ultimate load for continuous beams. So we have seen two span continuous beam, three span continuous beams with uh, different loads. Today we will see few more problems which are more or less in the same line. Uh, these problems are uh, very important from the examination point of view. Now this is a very simple problem. You find such type of problems uh, in competitive examinations where uh, within a minute uh, you need to identify the plastic moment capacity if uh, the load is given as a numerical or any type of problems uh, in that particular direction. Now kindly say this is the problem, a propelled uh, beam having a span of 4 meter subjected to a concentrated load, so 15 kilo newton at the center. So span 4 meter, this is the fixed end, obviously a plastic hinge will come and this is uh, the propelled end where it behaves like a simply supported uh, support, hinge is not going to come. Plastic hinge is not going to come, but otherwise uh, the portion undergoes rotation and exactly under the load, uh, so we have uh, one plastic hinge. So here the problem is symmetric and uh, the load gets displaced by an amount uh, delta. Kindly see here, so this is based on the kinematic approach. So this is delta equal to 2 into theta. So 2 meter into theta, in fact I have written straight away over there, 2 theta. So this is theta, this is theta and finally the rotation of the plastic hinge at the center is 2 theta. So this is a very simple uh, kinematic uh, uh, relation. So with this uh, we will be able to calculate the MP. In fact this is what the mechanism, the mechanism of uh, this uh, propelled uh, beam. So the external work uh, done by the 15 kilo newton load is 15 kilo newton displaced by delta, delta being 2 theta, so this is 30 theta. What is the internal work done by the plastic hinge when it undergoes continuous deformation? So MP over certain portion of the beam into theta, so this is MP into 2 theta, so that's what I have written here, so it is 3 MP theta. So equating the external work done by the load and the internal work absorbed by the plastic edge. So we have the final relation 3 MP theta equal to 30 theta. Theta theta gets cancelled out. MP is equal to 10 kilo newton meter. So such type of problems uh, we can work out uh, within uh, no time. So for any combination of load there could be series of uh, concentrated loads or there may be UDL. So it is a simple approach uh, and within a short time you will be able to get the value of MP. Let us go to the second problem. So again, analyze the problem for uh, W. So that is uh, the ultimate load carrying capacity. But if you see this problem, uh, the loads acting on the beam is given. So the question of you determining the ultimate load doesn't come into picture at all. So in fact, we need to solve this problem for EMP. Now kindly see the entire uh, length of the beam. So the left portion of the beam is having uh, EMP. The second span, is having 2 MP. Now as far as the junction is concerned, plastic hinge is going to form because it is the continuity uh, support. Obviously the minimum of uh, MP of the left and the right span, which is MP that controls the rotation here. So we have to take MP here. Here it is MP, obviously that beam has MP. And at the center also we have a plastic hinge. So the moment being MP. But when you come to the right span, so at the junction still it is uh, MP but 
under the load it is 2 mp and under this load also it is 2 mp because entire beam is uh, having a capacity of 2 mp compared to the mp of the left span so c is the hinge where you will not get the uh, plastic hinge because uh, it acts as a mechanical hinge but i am not going to do this problem completely so you please uh, work out this problem assume that the given load is uh, the ultimate load if it is uh, the working load then obviously we need to multiply with uh, the load factor so that can be assumed as 1.7 unless otherwise specified for the combination of dead load and uh, imposed load now kindly see friends uh, as far as uh, the simply supported uh, uh, sorry as far as the fixed beam is concerned because this uh, continuous supports acts as a fixity in fact we have derived the formula for this so what is mp so you can uh, straight away use that formula and sometimes it is better to write the mechanism and then formulate the equation on your own so i'm not going to dis uh, discuss this in greater detail but i want to introduce one particular concept uh, but here what we have done is uh, we have taken the average load so 16 kilo newton acting over 12 that is what the total load act in fact and that total load gets displaced by delta but since the UDL, load, UDL is acting on the beam you need to take the average deflection so that is where the total load and the average displacement comes into picture so if the displacement at the center is delta so delta being uh, 6 theta but we have to again divide that by 2 so thereby you are going to get the MP for the span AB otherwise uh, if you have a mechanism so mechanism as you know it is uh, a triangle so try to uh, recollect what the mechanism is then we have a concept called as the external work done is equal to intensity of the load kindly see here I have just written the intensity then see what is the remaining thing so the remaining thing is simply the area of the triangle forming the mechanism so what is the mechanism so it's a triangle as you can uh, see here in fact I have not written the mechanism so off into base I have written the base into height height being delta and delta is nothing but uh, 6 into theta so this is where the external work from the consideration of the intensity of load multiplied by the total area of the triangle forming the mechanism comes into picture with that it is 576 theta otherwise what we have done in the previous uh, case is to take the total load 16 is what the intensity kindly say here we have 12 so 16 into 12 is the total load so that gets displaced by delta so delta being 6 theta but I have further divided that by 2 to take the average displacement so total load average displacement so that is uh, one approach otherwise intensity of the load multiplied by the area of the triangle so just to introduce uh, this small concept uh, so i have taken uh, once again uh, another problem but uh, the external work done by the plastic is remains constant so here mp into theta here mp into theta at the center mp into theta plus theta so everything is symmetric so it is theta plus theta so that is equal to 4 mp theta equating that to 576 theta so you can calculate what is mp 144 kilo newton meter so in the same way you try for the second span but uh, mind you the second span has uh, two concentrated load so kindly work out for uh, the plastic hinge coming under 192 and in the second case plastic hinge uh, considering uh, at uh, 288 but in the third case plastic hinge forming at both locations uh, under 192 kilo newton and at under 288 kilo newton but in all the cases one plastic hinge at b will definitely form and let's say there is no plastic hinge so when you try to work out this problem at b you have to take mp as far as the internal work is concerned but when you are operating for the two concentrated loads so we have to multiply with uh, 2 mp and also kindly say so the value of theta and theta 1 comes into picture here because of uh, uh, the loads are not symmetric so when you have a mechanism corresponding to uh, any one of the loads and, but when you have the mechanism where the hinges are forming at both the loads then the mechanism will be symmetric so the th uh, theta will be uh, equal for uh, both the loads 
So anyway, so once you draw the mechanisms, you will be able to uh, understand and appreciate and with that uh, work out as to what the EMP. So that is where uh, the MP for the two span comes into picture and then uh, how to select a section for the entire beam that depends on uh, the maximum MP in case uh, you are suggesting a uniform section as a part of the design. So let us uh, take one more simple problem. Again, uh, this is uh, taken from the examination paper. So this is a very simple problem. So no UDL, all are concentrated loads. So if you take the first span AB, so this is uh, like a propped beam. In fact, uh, we have uh, derived the formula for W. So what is W? You know it. So that formula can be straight away written, but explain with the help of the mechanism. Now kindly see the last span CD. Again, it is similar to the first span only, but instead of W, it is 2W. So if the given load is uh, W being the working, then you simply take it as W being the ultimate load and calculate the ultimate load. So there's no change as far as uh, AB is concerned and also CD is concerned as far as the mechanism is concerned. But for the central span BC, it is like a fixed beam because at B you have the moment and also at C we have the moment. So obviously we have derived the formula for that also for the central concentrated load. So kindly see here the beam appears to be centrally loaded but if you see very carefully the span to the left and to the right eh, of the load to the left it is L by 3 to the right it is 2L by 3. So obviously so it is an eccentric load. So with that eccentric load, theta, theta 1 comes into picture. So with reference to B, I have taken it as theta and uh, obviously to the other uh, end it is theta 1 and the deflection at the load point is uh, delta equal to L by 3 theta. So L by 3 theta I have written here only. So now this uh, deflection is constant for the left triangle and also for the right triangle. So obviously, so L theta by 3. So this is constant, so that is equal to L by 3 theta and again that is further equal to 2L by 3 theta 1. So with that, what is theta and theta 1 that can be calculated and finally, so you can calculate MP forming the work equation based on the principle of virtual work. So that is what the problem I have worked out uh, my dear friends here. So kindly say, so W into L by 2 theta equal to MP theta here. Uh, sorry, here uh, there is no plastic hinge and only at the center we have plastic hinge MP into 2 theta but at the end because of the continuity we have the plastic hinge where moment is MP theta so 3 MP theta so equating the two equation so W U or W C U means ultimate otherwise it is collapsed load so 6 MP by L so same W C equal to 6 MP by L is what the answer for uh, this span C D but the load is 2 W so 2WC is equal to 6MPL, so obviously WC is equal to 3MP by L as far as the third span is concerned. Be careful about that. Now for the mechanism 2, so the relationship between theta and theta 1, what I explained, I have written here. So theta 1 is equal to theta by 2. And also you will be able to make out uh, what is theta 1, it is half of theta. So when you write the mechanism very properly to the scale, here it is not drawn to the scale it appears the triangle is symmetric but it is not so so stick to the scale also to some extent we will be able to make out whether theta is more or theta 1 is more and the answer can also be checked so here so it is uh, mp theta and kindly say here mp theta plus theta 1 and as far as c is concerned mp theta 1 so theta 1 is of theta so substituting all these things uh, and simplifying it is 3 mp theta and that should be equal to w into this displacement which i have written straight away that is l by 3 theta so with this wc l by 3 theta so wc is equal to 9 mp by l so for span ab 6 mp by l for span bc 9 mp by l as i told you for span uh, 3 Again, if you simplify it, it is 3 MP by L, which I have told. So the minimum for all the three spans is nothing but the collapse load for the continuous beam A, B, C, D. So that is 3 MP by L and the beam fails by beam mechanism of uh, BC. So this is uh, what the problem and finally corresponding to 
डब्ल्यू सी इक्वल टू थ्री एम पी बै एल सो यू कैन ड्रा दि बेडिम मोमेंट डायग्राम फॉर दि एंटर कंटिन्यूअस बी सो आल देर इज नो मोमेंट इयर बट देर इज अ फिस्ड मोमेंट इयर अगेन देर इज अ फिस्ड मोमेंट एम पी सो इट बिकम्स ए ट्रयांगल एंड देन ए रेक्टांगल अफकोर्स यू हेव ए ट्रयांगल एंड एस फ्रेज ए बी बी सी एंड सी डी इज कंसर्न सो देर आल दि ट्रयांगल आर शेप आफ फ्री बेडिंग मोमेंट डायग्राम एंड super pose the two diagrams and write the free bending moment diagram which you have discussed in many of the problems in the previous class now let us uh, move on to the shear factor problems now as far as the t section is concerned the section is uh, not symmetric with respect to the horizontal axis and it is symmetric with respect to the vertical axis so whatever is the case observe how the dimensions of the two elements of the t section is defined As for the flange of the T is concerned, it is 100 mm by 10 mm. So you know the area, 100 into 10, 1000. Kindly see the other portion, which is the web part or the stem part of the T section. So that is again 150 is the depth by 10. So there are two elements, 150 mm by 10 mm and 100 mm by 10 mm. So these are the two elements being used for fabricating this section. Now there are uh, two sections that comes into picture from the point of uh, shear factor. So kindly see this uh, Z section. So this is uh, the section corresponding to the centroidal axis. So this is the point uh, where the centroidal axis uh, passes through. And with respect to the centroidal axis, we need to determine the elastic properties, moment of inertia, and the section modulus with respect to that. Of course, corresponding to the extreme fiber, and the extreme fiber is uh, this one. at the bottom so not this extreme fiber so this extreme fiber the distance is uh, lesser and for this extreme fiber it is more so this is the farthest uh, distance so with respect to the farthest extreme fiber we need to determine the section modulus but with respect to zz now kindly say i have uh, written uh, one more axis one more axis uh, so this is uh, x1 x1 and uh, if i treat this x1 x1 as the equal area axis the area of the flange plus a small area of the web so it will be equal to what the area you have at the bottom so the area of uh, one element below that uh, axis and uh, the area of the two elements above that axis so they are equal and from that consideration so i'll be able to determine the plastic section modulus taking the moment of the top area with respect to that axis and along with uh, the moment of the bottom area as well so let us see the calculation part let the distance of the neutral axis from uh, the top be y bar so this uh, distance in fact uh, i have written it uh, like this one minute distance of the neutral axis uh, from the top y bar is uh, this one so obviously this uh, xx uh, x1 and x1 is the centroidal axis so this is the centroidal axis about which uh, the elastic properties need to be determined so you can also just make a mention that x1 x1 is the centroidal axis zz is the plastic section modulus so while explaining uh, uh, i got myself confused and i uh, have uh, interchanged but what is important is uh, <coughs> the concept uh, which will be able to C and appreciate in the calculation. So Z Z is equal area axis, but X one X one is the centroidal axis about which we are determining the Y bar, I Z, and of course uh, the section modulus. Now kindly say the top area of the element hundred into ten. So it's on a centroidal axis at a distance of ten by two from the top. The second area is one uh, fifty into ten. Its centroidal axis is here. So you know its own distance is uh, half of 150, 75. Plus we need to add 10 because this is the reference line. That is what I have <coughs> written here: 150 into 10, 75 plus 10. So whatever I have here as uh, 100 into 10, I have put it at the bottom being the area 150 into 10. So I have put it at the bottom because y bar is summation of a y and divided by summation of a for all the elements so with this it is 53 mm so kindly say so this distance is uh, 53 mm 
and what is this distance so that can also be determined so 150 plus 10 160 160 minus of 53 if you do it so you are going to get the remaining so that is where the extreme fiber distance uh, comes into picture now how to calculate the moment of inertia so here you need to collect the moment of inertia of the top flange b being 100 into depth cube 10 cube by 12 but its area is concentrated here its own centroidal axis but that second moment of area need to be transferred onto this axis so this is the centroidal axis the entire cross section so that is where parallel axis theorem comes into picture and uh, you should be very careful but as far as the remaining uh, section element is concerned the same way we need to work it out so this is the second area its own centroidal axis is uh, here 150 by 2 but transfer that effect onto this x x1 x1 again that distance square comes into picture so these things uh, you can do it by looking to the figure otherwise also kindly say friends so you can also do it uh, by using uh, this equation itself and if you are a bit careful so the entire equation for iz can be calculated within no time so this is b and this is d so bd cube by 12 so that is what the moment of inertia of the first element and the area being 100 into 10 into the distance square the distance of the centroid of the element with respect to the centroid of the entire section so that is where this 10 by 2 the centroid of the element at 5 mm of the entire element entire section it is 53 so 53 minus of this whole square for the first element 53 minus of this or this minus of 53 so when you square it that positive negative is not a problem so what we will be doing as a square to transfer the area effect is 53 minus of this 10 by 2 square 53 minus of so this entire thing square as far as the second element is concerned so area into distance square but for the second element b d cube what is b d cube horizontal is b vertical is d similarly for the second element horizontal is b vertical is 150 so kindly see that 10 into 150 cube by 12 plus area 10 into 150 into so 85 is this minus 53 whole square with that this is the answer the extreme fiber distance being y max so this is a uh, y bar so this is uh, more actually it is uh, y max so calculate that y max 160 minus of 53 that's what i have told you so dividing iz by y max is uh, this much so this is where the section modulus in uh, mm cube comes into picture so 62250 so similarly we need to work out as to what is the plastic section modulus so section modulus of the section when the entire cross section plastifies so that should be done with respect to the equal area axis and uh, we have seen that this is the equal area axis what is the total area 100 into 10 1000 and if you take the bottom area 150 into 10 so 1500 plus 1000 it is 2500 and half of that is 1250 so already we have 1000 as a flange so only 250 need to be accommodated here so 10 is the width so obviously so this dimension will be able to get it so that is just uh, 25 so this is 25 and of course this is 10 so the equal area axis is at a distance of 35 so straight away many of the things can be worked out and see that it is mentioned properly on the sketch also so this is what they final uh, configuration of the dimension so what is the depth of the equal area axis in fact uh, straight away we can calculate so 2500 by 2 is what the area and if the dimensions are a bit odd so we will not be able to calculate uh, by looking at the figure so this is the area 100 into 10 i have written it here so let us assume the depth which is not known because uh, this section is somewhat uh, having odd dimensions so this is uh, y1 so sorry i have taken uh, so where is uh, y1 i am measuring so y1 is being measured from the extreme top so kindly see that so this is y1 which is not known 
so obviously I have put it y1 here so minus of uh, this uh, 10 so obviously what is the depth so this depth which is uh, unknown into 10 so I have written it here so the summation of these two should be equal to of the area so that y1 is equal to 35 in fact by looking at this sketch itself uh, so this 35 can be identified but sometimes we need to work out so what is zp so we have the formula a by 2 y1 plus y2 so what is y1 so y1 is actually the centroidal axis of the top portion so kindly see friends uh, so this is where uh, two approaches uh, of finding zp comes into picture above the equal area axis you have the section which uh, further looks in the form of a t section only so why where exactly the center of the area of the top flange is top portion is located so it is uh, somewhere here kindly see the cursor so that point need to be identified again we need to consider the top flange and the small portion and then this is to be identified and similarly for the bottom so it is uh, very easy because uh, it is at this particular point so being the central depth of this portion so that can be straight away determined so now the problem is uh, to find the centroid of the top t instead of that uh, so there is a simple approach uh, kindly say that approach is instead of using uh, a by 2 one portion to the top and its own centroid and similarly the portion to the bottom and its own centroid this uh, works better if you have two parts but when you have multiple parts like uh, uh, the situation of an I section or a T section so you can also go by individual area and the distance individual area and the distance for all the elements not only above but also below the equal area axis so there are three areas top flange a small portion of the web above the equal area axis and the portion below the equal area axis so area and the distance to the center of that area with respect to equal area axis second elemental area the center being here and its distance the third area and it is concentrated here and its distance so that's what uh, you can also try to work out 100 into 10 into 30 please remember how this 30 has been calculated because 35 is known which has been calculated here center is here so you need to subtract 5 so that this one so that is straight away 30 now as for the second area is concerned so you know the depth is 25 so 25 into 10 so that's what the area but half of 25 is what the depth so that's where 12.5 comes into picture bottom area 125 into 10 and half of 125 62.5 so with this so this is what the answer so zp kindly say it is always the more substantially higher compared to elastic section modulus so it is which is just 62,250 but here it is more than 1 lakh so 1 lakh 11,250 upon 62,250 it is 1.787 also try to appreciate uh, in case of T section the plastic uh, uh, section modulus is uh, substantially higher and your shape factor is uh, definitely close to 1.5 plus so it is 1.78 1.5 is for the rectangle so in this case depending on the depth of the web so it is closely lying around uh, 1.4 to 1.8 depending on the situation but in case of i section you know it it is varying from 1.1 going up to 1.2 so that is where uh, the shape factor of a i section shape factor of t section is much more compared to the shape factor of a I section so that's what you need to appreciate now let us take uh, one more problem so this is uh, again uh, a symmetric I section whenever you have a symmetric I section the calculation of all properties is not going to take more than about 5 to 10 minutes but you have to be very careful so the top element 200 mm by 3 mm so this is where I have written the 3 mm at uh, bottom so 300 by 200 by 3 mm but the center one is 300 by 1.5 so web is smaller 1.5 whereas the flange is almost double it is 3 mm so the centroidal axis exactly at the center this being the centroid so equal area axis is also that one where the top area 
in the form of a T and the bottom area it is also T both are same so equal area axis from the point of uh, plastic section modulus and the centroidal axis for determining the elastic properties and the elastic section modulus so we need to work it out with respect to the same axis ZZ so students should be very careful how this problem can be solved so there are two approaches so the first approach uh, what you see in many of the textbook where you need to calculate the centroidal axis so kindly see the section is symmetric the equal area axis passes through the center of the cross section calculate the center of gravity for the divided section about uh, zz axis so this is for the calculation of the plastic section modulus please see the heading plastic section modulus calculation what is this uh, white top so this is uh, what the top area so the centroid of that kindly see the cursor so somewhere here we have otherwise the centroid of top flange is here it is own center but for the web part above the equal area axis again at this point so the resultant of the area we are looking for so it is somewhere closer to the junction or maybe slightly uh, above or below depending on the dimension so that need to be worked out and that is where uh, so we have a formula so area of the top so its centroidal distance and uh, the next uh, area 115 to 1.5 and its centroidal distance so that is where 150 into 1.5 and half of 150 so 200 into 3 and its distance 150 plus 1.5 comes into picture so that is where 151.5 and dividing that by the area so this is into and here this is into so this is a extra thing we need to uh, forget this one so in a small mistake in the uh, putting the symbol there is a small error so 130.64 is got the answer so similarly with respect to the bottom we have the same area so what is uh, plastic section modulus the total area so we can work out the total area individually so 200 into 3 into 2 because we have one such bottom area and 300 into 1.5 so with that so whatever we have here at the bottom is not the answer so we need to work out separately 1650 by 2 into so the answer 130.64 for the top t and similarly the same answer for the bottom t with that the plastic section modulus is worked out like this kindly see how to calculate the shear factor so we need the elastic uh, section modulus so to calculate this elastic section modulus we need the iz so it is the same way so i have uh, written it here so bdq by 12 of the top element and uh, kindly say area into distance square comes into picture because the center of the top area is here but the transformed effect with respect to z you need to consider into 2 because we need to take the bottom area as well but as far as the central web is concerned so we need to add only b dq by 12 and its center is here and of course that is what the center where the equal area axis is pausing so sorry so centroidal axis is pausing so obviously we need not have to transfer any area because they coincide so that's what i have done it here so 200 cube by 12 into area into distance square for the top flange into 2 if you do it so both the flanges but for the web width is 1.5 b into 300 cube by 12 so if you simplify this it is 30.92 into 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power 4 because uh, the dimension is uh, mm4 so therefore ZE so we need to divide iz by the extreme fiber distance and of course the extreme fiber distance here it is same for both five for both the top and bottom fibers because uh, it is symmetric so with that you are going to get this as the answer so 202.08 into 10 cube mm cube so therefore uh, what is shape factor so this is in fact less so 202 is less because it is elastic section modulus kindly see here it is 215 there is not much of a difference but still a small uh, difference comes into picture but this is slightly more so 215 but here it is uh, 202 a very small uh, 
uh, increase but if you take the ratio it is close to one but slightly more than one so if you round off this uh, it is 1.1 so that's where the shape factor of i section 1.1 going up to 1.2 comes into picture it is very close to one because the thickness of the web is very small compared to thickness of the flange so depth is more but the web thickness is very very small 1.5 mm otherwise for the flange it is 3 mm now by chance if you take this web as 3 mm similar to the thickness of the flange so then the shear factor increases because we are putting slightly more area towards this centroidal axis and also towards the equal area axis so because we are not increasing the area of the flange means the area is kept away from the centroidal axis and also from the equal area axis but since you are increasing the thickness of the web so obviously the area near the center also increases so with reference to that uh, the shear factor what you are going to get is uh, substantially more than one so let us see one simple problem of that type anyway for this problem so because uh, even the plastic moment capacity is uh, asked so mp is nothing but what zp we have calculated here so 215.56 so kindly see so 215.56 into 10 to the power of 3 so it is written as a whole number into the yield stress of the steel so we need to assume some value say 250 megapascal so with that uh, it is uh, 53.49 into 10 to the power of 6 so into 10 to the power of 6 so we need to remember that so that is missing here but otherwise if you remove that 10 to the power of 6 uh, then it becomes kilonewton meter so that is where 53.49 kilonewton meter is uh, what the plastic moment carrying capacity of the section which is a huge value so even though the section is uh, uh, appears to be not so uh, robust because the thickness is uh, hardly within few mm so let us take uh, one more problem where i have uh, increased uh, the thickness of the web web but uh, before i go to that one so let us see the second method so for the same problem so instead of finding the centroid of the top and centroid of the bottom and then working out the plastic section modulus so kindly see the plastic section modulus can be worked out uh, very easily and also the moment of inertia how it can be worked out by taking the symmetry into consideration so please see i z so take the entire area out to out area so 200 over a depth of 300 plus 33 306 so 200 into 306 cube by 12 minus we have one symmetric area to the left and to the right and what is the width it is 200 minus of 1.5 so that is nothing but 198.5 into its own depth so 300 cube by 12 so this is the advantage of symmetry so you have the answer straight away so the extreme fiber distance is same here so this is uh, 130 so sorry 150 but you need with respect to this extreme top and this extreme bottom so 150 plus 3 153 so that's what i have put it here so you do get the same answer so you can just compare it uh, with the previous problem but how the plastic section modulus can be determined very easily kindly see so 200 into 3 its own center and its distance with respect to equal area axis so 150 plus 1.5 so that's where 151.5 comes into picture and similarly for uh, the kindly say 150 into 1.5 what is that 150 into 1.5 so 150 into 1.5 is this one so 150 into 1.5 so i have written that 150 into 1.5 and the distance is here 150 into distance the whole thing need to be multiplied with 2 because we have a similar area at the bottom also so that 2 uh, i should have written it here also so the 2 is here so into that value the entire top so that is what the answer i have written it here so with this the shear factor is in fact the same thing so it is a very very simple approach but we should be very careful as to how we are uh, calculating the different properties taking the advantage of the symmetry 
so i have taken uh, one more problem where the dimensions are uh, different exactly similar to the previous problem so the whole area and the i i of that is bd cube by 12 kindly say minus the two inner area need to be removed from the rectangle so that is there 100 minus of 10 so it is 19 to 200 cube by 12 so i have i set and uh, this is 100 plus 10 extreme fiber distance is 110 so z e i have some value like this what is plastic section modulus top area its distance so kindly see the top area 100 into 10 and its distance what is the distance so entire depth is 200 for the web off is 100 up to the center here 10 by 2 so that is where 105 comes into picture so now this is uh, another area 100 into 10 so for the top portion so that also i have put it here its center into this distance is 50 so this is what i have exercised for the top portion but the whole thing need to be multiplied with 2 so the 2 is missing here also so put that 2 here anyway that you two, that 2 you will be able to see here the answer of the number this particular uh, uh, sentence so you have it here so with that it is 31 uh, so 31 followed by four zeros so put that value as a plastic section modulus here in the numerator so divided by the elastic section modulus so it is 1.188 so this is how we can calculate the shear factor of the section in a uh, lesser time so provided you know the concept thereby the advantage of symmetry can be taken so friends uh, so let us uh, take uh, the triangle so how the shear factor of a triangle or section can be determined so it is uh, um, not that easy it requires uh, some thinking and uh, students should be very very careful so not many students will be able to get the answer uh, in the examination also so because uh, it is a bit confusing but what we are uh, uh, following here is uh, the calculation of the elastic property through the elastic centroidal axis and the properties of the plastic section through the uh, what do you call the equal area axis so we need to calculate the depth so that the top area which is inscribed uh, inside uh, the outer area so that area and some proportionality relationships of the respective sides and then the area of the trapezium and its uh, centroidal distance as far as uh, the bottom uh, half of the area of the triangle is concerned so these are all uh, the few things we should be very careful and with this you uh, will be able to get the answer in about 15 minutes uh, to 18 minutes so this problem can be worked out now let us see the triangular section let us see the triangular section so this is uh, where uh, the dimension b and uh, the height being h comes into picture so kindly see the h by 3 from the base and uh, 2 h by 3 from the apex so this is where the centroidal axis and this dot being the centroid and uh, the property as you know students with respect to the centroidal zz axis so bh cube by 36 so anyway this formula is uh, familiar to you and also you have bh cube by 12 don't get confused with bh cube by 12 so that is a higher value and that larger value is always be at the base because you are going away from the centroid so along the centroid so your uh, moment of inertia is less but when you go either uh, above or below so we are moving away from the centroidal axis and obviously your second uh, moment of area or the moment of inertia increases obviously the denominator the constant is lesser so bh cube by 36 please remember that the extreme fiber distance is 2h uh, by 3 so that's what i have written it here so bh square by 24 so straight away elastic section modulus can be written for the triangular section without uh, much of uh, thinking now if you take the uh, same triangle as far as the determination of the plastic section modulus is uh, concerned so this is uh, the equal area axis means the area of the top triangle 
so with respect to AA so kindly see how I am moving the cursor so this is the top area and the bottom area is uh, the trapezium so I have assumed the bottom of the inscribed triangle to be of width B1 external uh, uh, width of the outer triangle is B so B1 upon B and the height of the inner triangle h1 upon h so they are equal so that's where the proportionality relation comes into picture so which is uh, written here as far as uh, the two areas with respect to the equal area axis is concerned and another interesting thing what we know is uh, the entire area off into base into height but what is the inner area of the inscribed triangle it is off uh, off of the total area and that area is equal to the area of the trapezium so obviously the area of the inscribed triangle inscribed triangle is of bh why it is the total area half of that half of the total area is what the area of the inscribed triangle and that is also equal to the dimensions what i have uh, defined half into base b1 into its height h1 so this is uh, very very clear with respect to the two similar triangles uh, again h1 b1 h1 is equal to of bh so what is the meaning of this so multiplication of the two smaller dimensions horizontal and vertical is equal to again the multiplication of the outer so multiply the outer b and h it is definitely more obviously that should be equal to b1 h1 so b1 h1 is half of b h so simply we can remember this uh, and the proportionality relation also we can remember so with this we will be able to calculate what is h1 as a function of h what is b1 as a function of b please uh, see here i will uh, tell you one uh, simple uh, clue so b1 is always be less than b h1 is always be less than h so we need to use uh, the root 2 concept so kindly see the next slide what is that root 2 concept so h divided by root 2 so root 2 means uh, 1.414 so uh, the answer is uh, if you take it to the numerator it is 0 0.707 so obviously h1 is 0 0.707 of h b1 is again 0 0.707 of p so this is where 70% of the respective dimensions will be the dimensions of the inscribed uh, triangle. So this H1 is 0.7 of this and uh, this B1 is 0.7 of this B. So to get that relation only, so we are uh, making use of this uh, uh, the symmetry concept as far as the inscribed and the outer triangles are concerned. And of course from the similar triangle, the respective ratios are proportional. So with this, uh, we are getting uh, this relation so to get only this relation so we have done all these juggleries now uh, coming to what is this uh, y1 bar so y1 bar is so kindly say what is this uh, y1 bar so here this is y1 bar so distance of the centroid of the inscribed triangle so i will call this as the top triangle inscribed triangle so height is h1 so obviously one third of height this is being calculated from the base but for the trapezium so this is what the height please uh, see here so in fact we know the centroid of the trapezium so maybe in your uh, high school level so this must have been taught to you so h by 3 so into so you know that uh, formula so that formula i have written it here h by height by 3 into so the two top and bottom dimension so in the numerator it is b1 plus 2b so please remember this particular uh, formula so this is in fact a similar type of problem uh, we have worked out earlier also but uh, what is to be multiplied with 2 is uh, very important it is 2 times b so this is where twice the larger width so please remember that so this is uh, b1 and this is 2b so a plus 2b concept so b1 plus 2b concept so you need to be very careful that so 2 comes only for b not for b1 because we are calculating from the top 
with respect to the smaller uh, parallel dimension of the trapezium so this is where you need to be a bit careful so y2 is equal to h by 3 what is h so this is the height of the trapezium overall height h minus of height of the top triangle so it is h minus of h1 so that by 3 into so b1 plus 2b b1 plus b so this is where you have to be careful but you know what is h1 so it is less compared to h by what value so this is 0.707 this is h so straight away we can subtract otherwise we can put it in the this fashion also as we have determined here so wherever h1 is there h by root 3 wherever b1 is there b1 by b1 by root 2 so b1 by root 2 so with this uh, final simplification if you take some few minutes so you can work out and finally you can get to 0.4643 h and if you further simplify it it is uh, 0.15 something you are going to get so answer you please uh, remember so that in the examination you can check uh, whether you are getting that answer so with that now putting it back uh, in this uh, expression for the plastic section modulus so this is a total area of the area of the section so area of the section is uh, half into base into height because it is triangle and half of that is a by 2 so kindly see y1 bar so y1 bar is h by 3 into 1 by root 2 so this we have already identified here so plus y2 bar so this is uh, what has been calculated in the previous so sorry so this one so that value i have put it here so now if you simplify it taking bh square outside and then simplifying it it will be 0 0.0976 bh square and obviously the shape factor so taking the plastic section modulus so which is this value we have written it here divided by this has been already worked out to start with bh square by 24 so I am going to get 2.343. So we need to simply remember. So 2.343. So in fact, uh, triangular section is a section uh, probably having uh, the maximum plastic section modulus, uh, which is uh, 235% roughly. 235%. 2.35 compared to the elastic section modulus. So plastic section modulus is. Uh, 2.34 times more compared to elastic section modulus and that is where a smooth transitional change in the moment carrying capacity with respect to theta moment curvature relationships if you recollect in one of the earlier classes we have shown where the effect of the shear factor with respect to the rotation capacity so where the non-linearity of the variation so that is where elastic plastic behavior so the yielding to L elastoplastic and then to complete plastification that entire process and the depth in that diagram the amount of moment so what the section takes uh, is substantially higher so this is uh, what the importance of uh, shear factor and why this uh, value is so high again it is because of the fact that with respect to the centroid you kindly say more area if you try to imagine that there is a circle here most of the area of the triangle is confined uh, near the centroid so that is the reason shear factor is more from my to mp so there is a substantial uh, difference and uh, one in fact 2.34 times of uh, my moment uh, the section is going to take but from the point of carrying the moment itself uh, so this particular section is not that effective because most of the area is uh, confined at the centroid so it's not going to contribute much to the moment because uh, there is no second moment of area but with the same triangular area if you convert this area into an equivalent i section then i increases tremendously z increases tremendously so that the moment carrying capacity of the section can be increased quite enormously at the elastic uh, condition itself from that elastic condition to the plastic condition the further increase is not that much but otherwise the moment carrying capacity of an equivalent i section is substantially more and that is where still i section is the best section efficient section from the point of elastic moment carrying capacity or even the 
plastic moment carrying capacity but the shear factor is uh, rather uh, close to one and if there is no web so probably the contribution of the two flanges and if you see the shear factor it is exactly equal to one so that is where the importance of the web there is a small area you are trying to accommodate uh, near the centroid and uh, like that if you have a regular section so where it is uh, square or rectangle it is 1.5 but if you have a circular one so in case of circular one uh, so more area still confined towards the centroid but whereas in case of a rectangle so your area is slightly away so thereby in rectangle it is 1.5 but in circle it is 2 so it is slightly sorry 1.7 if i remember and uh, if you have a diamond so what is diamond so it is a triangle to the top and similarly triangle to the bottom so that's where uh, a diamond shape or a parallelogram shape comes into picture still more area near the center so obviously the shape factor is 2 but of the diamond where we have something like a triangle so if you see surrounding the centroid so we have a very very large area confined so shear factor is still more than 2 and that is where the answer in this case is 2.343 so while uh, solving also i have explained the importances of uh, the different uh, parameters that will control the uh, elastic behavior and also factors that will control the uh, plastic behavior and of course the importance of shear factor so friends uh, so i will uh, stop at this stage so because uh, I'm not finding much time so if you have uh, any questions uh, you can ask and as I mentioned uh, so this is the last class as far as the module one is concerned so fundamentals of limit state method and plastic method of analysis and application of the plastic method to continuous beam so I have completed everything uh, as a part of the syllabus so best of luck and good wishes and if you have any queries you can contact me over phone and if possible, you can just send mails as well. All the best.